This is Toronto, the fastest growing city in Canada. The diverse culture and rapid growth have attracted more than 3 million people to this prosper urban centre since it was first established. After centuries of development, Toronto now stands one of the most populated, wealthy and successful cities in Canada, making the dream of tens of thousands of Canadians to be able to find a job and settle in Hogtown. The vibe, food and various activities that you can get here in Toronto are absolutely eye-dashing. Although this might sound like all sunshine and rainbow, however, it all comes with a cost. So today we'll be going through different categories of how Toronto can be more sustainable and most importantly how Toronto residents can help to make the human settlements more sustainable. Hey yo, how's it going? Today I'm joined by Jake Su here with a couple of Timmy's here in downtown Toronto and today we're gonna talk all about the sustainability of the great city of Toronto. Cheers. So you see, always coming here to Toronto from such a small town like Oakville always fascinates me about how much things is actually out there. There's so much more thing at such a bigger scale that I never thought of. I mean, where can you find traffic like this back in a small town like Oakville? Oh uh, well, we got that also. However, have you really thought about what is it that the Canadian citizens truly want? Are the countless hours someone will have to spend traveling to work daily? Really, local culture that Torontonians are proud of, especially for some one, living in such a peaceful and chill town like Oakville to dream and desire over. Well, yes, we don't deny that Toronto may be a crazily developed city, perhaps one of the most successful and large cities in Canada. However, what about all the pollutions? What about all the people that get stabbed every day from the TTC? What about all the population you can see on the street every day just inhaling and exhaling their cigarettes and vapes? Is that really the kind of city you want to go to? So. Today we're filming this documentary uh, in Toronto for a school project, you know, sustainability stuff. So we're gonna go around Toronto film these different um, stuff, like things like that. So, yes. Toronto's public transit system is the blood veins of Toronto and it's what keeps the city moving. The public transits include a variety of options from the GO trains to the TTC aka Toronto Trouble Center. Wait, somewhere in TTC is the same thing? Did you know, the average Toronto resident spends up to 56 minutes stuck in a commune every single day. So as you can see, there's still a lot of areas in which we can encourage Toronto to improve on. First, making the transit safer for everyone. Every week, we see plenty of incidents take place in the TDC subway line. Don't you think there's a reason for that? It's due to the unorganized system and undiversified lanes. For example, this is the map of Toronto subway, and this is Beijing's. Was that Beijing? Second, making the transits more accessible. We should give out discounts to youth and elders, or even better, for free. Compared to Oakville, which if you didn't know yet, Oakville buses are completely for free. I mean, that's how me and Jake get around while filming this documentary. And as we can see, this largely encouraged our willingness to touch grass. <laughs> now here, let's do a quick math. The average Toronto transportation per month is 913454.08 grams CO2 emissions. And with the new program of whatever this number is, which means we save this much numbers, um, that's a bit of a mouthful. So I'm not gonna say it. For all of your monkey brains, we basically developed a very achievable program where we use it the exact same duration, but half of it is using public transportation, which we found reduced the carbon footprint by a ton lot. And here is all the math if you're ever interested. And as you can see, we can reduce a lot of CO2 emissions if we can commit to travel more sustainably. Lastly, according to the City of Toronto's Climate Action Plan, transportation accounts for more than one third of greenhouse gas emissions in the city. So it is extremely important for each of us to evaluate our personal carbon footprint and try to reduce our emissions by using sustainable sustainable transportation options such as walking, cycling, or taking public transit like we said. Of course, um, like making sure that when there's no one in the room, you turn off the switches when you're not there. Removing the plug chargers. Most of the times people just keep their phones in charging, irrespective of whether the battery is charged or not. Similarly for the laptops, they aren't charging permanently. So, you skip that. This can help you reduce your uh, like electricity wastage. 
Did you know Toronto has more than 65,000 empty vacant units and buildings? That's millions of square feet put to waste. While well, they could have been used to better the city and make the city more sustainable. And there are quite a few different approaches we could take. Firstly, we can choose to demolish these structures not in use. By doing so, we're basically freeing up lots of empty spaces that could be utilized for Toronto's sustainability. For another way to make the most use out of these vacant structures, we can choose to retrofit them into buildings that are more energy efficient. In fact, Toronto has several programs and incentives revolved around retrofitting existing buildings. One of those great examples being the Tower Renewal Program, which focuses on retrofitting apartment towers, meaning that we can apply the benefits this program provides into sustainably renovating the empty buildings that used to be operating apartment. For the third and last option we recommend, we advise the Toronto government to add renewable energy systems onto the building. A few examples of some renewable energy systems that could be attached onto or built around these units can include solar panels, photovoltaic panels, solar thermal panels, geothermal panels, and so much more different types of systems that could sustainably generate energy. Over the past 20 years, over 100 renewable energy systems has been installed all over Toronto's buildings and infrastructures. With Toronto's new implementation of the Green Roof Bylaw Rule, the city has been working on to installing more silver cells over the city's area and streets. Some examples of those are Lower Street, Sugar Beach, Athletes Village, and so many more. So basically, we have this question. So, you guys know what silver cells are? Do you know what a silver cell is? Do you know what silver cells are? What? what? I'm sure. No, I don't. No, what is that? If you don't know, silver cells are sustainable infrastructures located on the streets and sidewalks that helps to keep the soils from being compact so more greeneries are allowed to grow. Even better, silver cells are made of recycled plastics, which makes them even more environmental friendly. However, silver cells are only applied to certain streets in Toronto. And as you can see from the interview videos, silver cells are not popularized enough, nor did they get the awareness they should get. So, for future plans of the city of Toronto, we encourage the government to implement more silver cells, thus we can raise more awareness for sustainability. One thing I'd like to see more of and I'm trying to do is just reuse things, right? Uh, I think the consumerism of the past is hopefully uh, not something of the future where people are thinking more about how they can um, you know, reuse things, buy things from other people, give things to other people, um, because stuff really doesn't wear out. Uh, we just get tired of it, and sometimes that's uh, pretty wasteful. The GTA area has a large amount of effort put into sorting its waste, because just think about it, imagine millions of tons of waste going through a landfill without any organization in place. Toronto in general uses a three-stream diversion way in order to sort its garbages, or in basic words, it's recycle, garbage, and compost. The city also has several facilities dedicated to waste management, such as recycling and composting facilities, waste transfer stations, and landfills. Toronto also encourages its residents to reduce waste generation and increase recycling through education and outreach programs, which we're going to talk about later in this video. Furthermore, the good thing is Toronto has adopted a circular economic strategy to reduce waste and promote recycling. And that includes the use of renewable resources and sustainable practices that residents can do on a day-to-day -day basis. In addition, Toronto's government support these small businesses and companies who have sustainable workflow and practices such as charging more for plastic bags such as like paper paper bags for groceries. Overall, Toronto has a comprehensive approach to waste management that prioritizes reducing waste generation, increasing recycling rate, and promoting sustainable practices. But through our time here in Toronto, this one day, and visiting so much places in the city, we realized that it's actually not as what they kind of said in the website. We realized that there are many garbage bins that only have a black garbage bin instead of recycling and compost like how the government promised. So we're here to encourage and we're here to call the government of Toronto to implement more this three diversion way of sorting garbages like how you promised. Since the 90s, the Toronto District School Board has made environmental education one of their top priorities. And up till this point, they are still working hard to teach kids about the environment. And one of the programs they have implemented to make this possible is the Toronto District School Board's Equal Schools program. 
helping educational institutions to reduce their negative environmental impacts, encouraging educational activities related to the environment. To add on even more, the Toronto District School Board has installed rooftop solar panels in over 350 of their schools, as well as having planted over 3,000 plus shade trees since 2007. However, Toronto does still do a lot more to help their educational institutions to become more sustainable. And one of our main suggestions for these schools in Toronto to achieve this is by inviting local farmers over to build sustainable classrooms like some schools in Oko have already done. Really emphasizing the idea of sustainability into every single student by getting them to participate in sustainable practices. In addition, the school board or teachers could give out some assignments related to the topic of sustainability, such as having their students do the research about a city or place in the world and give out suggestions of various categories. If the educators are super serious about their sustainable classroom, a recommendation I give out for educational institutions based in Toronto is to ask a well-known motivational speaker named Jake Su, famous for his magnificent what poem, What's Sustainability? Planting seeds in the garden for your grandchildren. It's like writing a few notes at the beginning of a song. The future generation will sing for me. 83. It's our greatest fine symphony, like you'll have seen. And let us make a difference. You pay a visit to their school with the cheap price of only some Haribo gummy bears, as you will greatly motivate the local students to act more sustainable while also educating them about the topic immensely. So here, I took the exact photo but four months apart in the Riverdale Park here in Toronto. And you can really see how April showers brought May flowers and of course, these greeneries that you can see in these pictures. Matter of fact, Toronto's green space covered more than 13% of the city's land and there are close to 100 community gardens in this Toronto area. So we're here to encourage more local Toronto residents to spend more time touching grass and stay connected with the community garden as these simple actions help improve the public health and by reforestation and cultivation it's the most effective way to remove CO2 and lower the overall carbon footprint. For centuries and more, Toronto's local food and crops has been produced for means of industrial agriculture, keeping around 3 millions of Torontonians nutritious and full. However, the system is not what we want the future of Toronto's food production to look like. Now, there is a more sustainable, environmentally, economically, and socially form of farming presented to the residents of Toronto. This is what's known as sustainable agriculture. To meet society's food and textile needs in the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. These benefits of the transformation for the farms in Toronto are widely believed to be reliable, not to mention how many scientific research has proven that this more sustainable model can be just as productive and profitable over time. If Toronto achieves autarky with their implementation of this new farming system, chances are the need of agricultural import will greatly decrease. Thus lowering the pollution polluted since the vehicles used for transporting food to Toronto will not be put in use. For more information on how sustainable agriculture works, check out the following link. An example of this being the Bernasor Collegia Institute High School in Etobicoke. Despite being flanked by grey apartment towers and a busy multi-link highway, it is the location for one of Toronto's new urban farms. The high school was able to accomplish this thanks to a special closed loop system, where the waste becomes the soil to grow food, and soil becomes food that becomes soil again. When it's operating, residents bring organic waste and receive tickets they can use to buy food at the local market. A bucket of food waste earns a resident $3, while well, a bunch of carrots can sell for $1. Being sustainable about food production is not as hard as it sounds, because when all is said and all is done, the only actions that are barely actions we encourage the average Toronto citizens to do to help their city to sustain better is as simple as just supporting local products and go check out whether they have an interest in gardening or not. As we conclude our day here in the vibrant city of Toronto, we're reminded that change begins with each and every single one of us. It's not only the city or the government, but it's about all the individuals who are proud to call Toronto home. We listened to the heart of Toronto beat and heard the rhythms of change in nature. And so we strive towards a greener, more sustainable future. We learned that it's not only about the carbon footprint or the greenhouse gases, but rather the connections we build and the collaborative efforts that make Toronto a better place. Toronto is a living proof of what mankind can achieve if we come together with a shared purpose. Together, we can inspire the world, showing that an urban center can also grow and thrive while respecting the creation of our planet. As 
we head back to where we came from, the sun sets over the city and glow through our Go Train's window, filling us with hope and determination of Toronto's journey towards sustainability. Let's create a Toronto that not only sustains but inspires, a city which guides the life for the world. Remember, change is constant and the journey continues, but the future is in our hands. Can you explain to the viewers what were you doing? 